first came across Sea Ranger about two years ago, I immediately knew that it would captivate the interest of you, my subscribers. This trawler style explorer yacht has a unique story worth sharing, and the video I created about it has since notched up over 1.3 million views. Sea Ranger wasn't conceived for a leisurely circumnavigation of the globe, instead she was purpose built to navigate the rugged coastlines and harsh conditions of high latitude regions. The visionary behind this vessel is the owner of a UK based commercial shipyard renowned for building, repairing and refitting some of the toughest commercial vessels, true workhorses of the maritime industry. For this owner the focus was never on lavish interiors or delicate features prone to wear and tear. His priority was a vessel robust enough to withstand all weather conditions year round ensuring the safety of his family as they explored the wild beauty of Scotland, Iceland and the rest of the UK. And so the Sea Ranger was born, a trawler style explorer yacht designed with toughness and exploration at its core. Before I show you around this boat once again, but this time giving you more details in terms of the machinery, the engines, the nav gear, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe. And remember, if you're looking to charter a boat of any size, any budget, anywhere in the world, then I can help you. So get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details in the link that I'll leave in the video description and the link that I'll leave pinned in the comments as well. So join me once again as I show you around this really fascinating, incredibly well-built boat and let me show you why she has become so popular with the Trawler Yacht community. So welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Loosdrecht in the Netherlands. So when I first made a video about the MMS 55 Sea Ranger about a year and a half ago and uploaded it to my YouTube channel I did not expect the video to get 1.2 million views, but that is how many views the first video that I made about this boat has had. So when Devault told me that the boat was back here uh, and it was listed for sale through them, I just knew that I had to come back and make another video about this fantastic boat. So really what I'm gonna do, rather than doing a full kind of yacht tour because I've already done it, uh, and if you wanna see that video, uh, you know where to go go through my playlist and you'll see that original Yacht Tour video. Really what I want to do with this particular uh, feature is just give you a bit more information about the, the engines, um, about the nav equipment on board the boat as well. But first what I will do, just in case you haven't seen the first video that I made uh, about a year and a half ago, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough just to show you uh, the layouts of this boat. Um, so if you have already seen the first Yacht Tour video, you can skip this bit and you can go to the bit where I talk a little bit more uh, about the engine, the machinery, uh, the nav equipment on board as well. And also make sure you stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'll give you the details in terms of how much the vessel is listed for sale for uh, and what you need to do uh, if you want to make um, a, an offer or if you want to get in contact with the listing broker uh, to find out more about buying the vessel. But anyway, back to the boat. So obviously at the moment we're on the starboard side deck. Uh, walking forward towards the bow and of course you'll notice the high ball walks the scuppers down here as well so if you do get any wash coming over the deck it quickly goes back into the sea and of course you've got the stainless steel handrail uh, atop the ball walks as well 
So when you do walk around the boat, you feel extremely secure, you feel safe, which is obviously really, really important. On the foredeck now, obviously big foredeck, lots of space. Over on the port side, we've got the tender. Starboard side here, we've got a life raft as well as the crane as well. But loads of space up here to move around, to do all the lines. Uh, we have been out on a uh, mini sea trial uh, and bringing her in, taking her out, handling the lines really easy thanks to the fantastic layouts of this boat. So let's head now towards the stern via the port side deck. And of course, check out those windows, a massive window amidships, the center there. Uh, really good view from the wheelhouse. Uh, and we'll go in there in a second just so I can show you that. But you get really good visibility all round. Anyway, let's head aft along the port side deck. Good thing with this wheelhouse as well is you can get access into it both on the port side and on the starboard side as well. So as I say, when you are handling the boat, when you're maneuvering the boat, navigating the boat, uh, not only is it incredibly straightforward in terms of getting access to all the lines you need to get access to, but the visibility and the overall handling of the boat uh, is really, really exceptional. Here, obviously, we've got a hatch that leads down into the engine room. So if you do need to do some maintenance on the engines and you've got uh, contractors on board doing that work, they can get access into the engine room without having to go through the uh, living area uh, and the accommodation area. So it's a good way of getting down into the engine room. And here, obviously, we've got a ladder that leads up on to the flybridge and we'll get up in the flybridge in a second but first let's go into the saloon as you can see over here on the port side we've got our l-shaped seating area uh, with a fixed table as well and there we've got all my camera gear if you are interested in finding out more about the camera gear that i use or the equipment that i use for these uh, videos uh, then make sure you head to my amazon affiliate store you'll find a link in the bio let's have a look over here because i want to show you it's been a while now since I've had to memorize and learn all my knots, but if you're a bit of a, a knot fan, I'm sure you recognize most of those. But yeah, I really like this area, lots of space. Of course, got those big windows there, uh, both on the port and starboard side. So lots of light coming in. And of course, we've got a proper door there with a decent threshold as well. So you can have that door open whilst you're underway, even if you are pumping through the gnarly stuff. Over here on the starboard side, the aft quarter, got a retractable TV. So if I show you the vantage point, if I sit down over here, you can just imagine the view, the TV popping up over there, whilst you also get to enjoy the seascape wherever you happen to be in the world. I really do love this boat. Um, yeah, I feel emotionally, I feel quite connected to it because it is one of the first videos that I did um, that actually went viral. So. You know, it's great to be back on board and it's great to show you guys around again. Let's head down into the galley as we descend these steps here. And look, over there on the starboard side, we have our galley, our cooktop, microwave oven, extractor fan up there as well. Two portholes over there that can be opened up. A sink over here on the right hand side. I don't think actually on the first yacht tour video that I did, I don't think I opened these up. So let's open these up for you just so you can see what's behind. Here, lots of storage, look. Guessing this is probably gonna be the fridge over here. And there we go, there's the fridge. Yeah, lots of space so you can do all your meal preparation. You do have something to grab onto as well over here just in case you do happen to be going through the lumpy stuff. But yeah, I like this, a nice, simple, elegant layout. Over on the port side, U-shaped seating area there. Nice and comfortable, lots of space. You could probably fit, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 people in there. Uh, plenty of space and of course, more portholes over there and a little glass cabinet in there, backlit glass cabinet. And of course, behind us is where we've got access, the internal access into the engine room. And like I said, I'm going to show you in there in a minute and just give a bit more detail in terms of the machinery on the boat than I did uh, in the first yacht tour that I did a year and a half ago. Let's pan around now, so we're facing forward. Let's start off with the accommodation over here 
on the starboard side. Open this door, as you can see, we've got a twin bunk configuration in here. Top bunk and a bottom bunk. And then you've got your cubby holes at the foot of each bunk as well. So you can stow away your iPad, your phone, whatever it is you're gonna be bringing with you. You can put that in there. Open this and show you. We've got some hanging locker space there as well. Close that back up. Turn around and show you the other side. More locker space there. Individual controls for the climate control in the cabin. And a vent over there for the air conditioning. And of course, we've got our porthole over there. Right, let's back up. Come back out here, shut this door. I'll show you into the master cabin in a second. But first, let me take you forward. Open up this door. And here we have a toilet, a sink of course, standard Royal Navy salute with the right hand because I've got my camera in the left hand. And here we have the shower, nice size shower in there. Somewhere you can sit as well, just in case it gets a bit rough, you can still sit down and have a dobe, a porthole over there, which can be opened up for some ventilation. Heated towel rail over there on that bulkhead as well. Let's come back, I love that by the way, look at that, a little anchor towel hook there, very nice. Let's move forward now into the second cabin. Twin single, again in a bunk configuration. Uh, bunks over there on the port side. Of course, you've got a ladder. So if you do need to get out of the boat in a hurry, you emerge through that hatch out onto the foredeck. Lots of hangar space in here, as you can see. You could even, really, if you wanted to, if you wanted to catch up with some emails, uh, put a chair in here and use this as a mini office. I think that's probably what I would do if I had this boat. I'd use this area uh, as a mini office. But there's some more storage there on that bulkhead. Right, let's go aft. Back into the passageway. And I'll take you now into the master cabin. So yeah, double bed of course. Plenty of storage in here. All your switches, your power point there, look. A USB charger, climate control, switches for your lights. Of course, behind here, got some space to stow away your personal items. We can walk on either side of the double bed as well, so you can walk around it, which is handy. And over here on this side, of course, you've got another power point, another switch, USB charger, as well. I'll open this up for you just so you can see it's pretty much the same as it is on the other side. Nice indirect lighting recessed into the cabinetry there. One of two portholes. Another one over there look. The heater on the wall and of course more storage over here, more hanging locker space. I won't open that side. I'm sure you can imagine what it looks like behind that door. And uh, let's move forward now into the ensuite. Shower over here on the right hand side as you enter. Again, decent sized shower. Nice heated towel over there on that bulkhead. And of course, another porthole and a sink in here as well. So, yeah, let's close this. So, the owner has done um, quite a bit of cruising uh, on this boat uh, recently. Uh, the boat was built by MMS Shipyard, hole number one of one. Uh, but MMS Shipyard are renowned for their work in terms of repairing trawlers, maintenance on trawlers, uh, dry bar bulk cargo ships as well. Uh, they really, really know what they are doing. And that really comes across as you walk around this boat. It's just such a well-built boat. Uh, it really is. Again, look, I'll give you another look in the engine room, but we're gonna go in there in a second first. I want to take you back up into the saloon. In fact, I don't think I noticed this on the first video I did. Look at that little cubby hole in there. I'm not sure what you want to keep in there. Maybe your passport's hidden away. Okay, let's come back into the saloon and turn around. Ascend these two steps into the wheelhouse. The helm is equipped with a Cassons and Plath compass 
For multi-control displays, the boat is fitted with Raymarine Axiom multi-touch units with four units in total. Depth sounder and log are managed by the Raymarine I-70S series and the windset is also part of the Raymarine I-70S line. Comms on board is handled by a Sailor VHF radio with DSC Class A certification. The autopilot system in use is the Raymarine P70S and radar capabilities are provided by the Raymarine Magnum radar system. Engine information is relayed via two easy to read control panels with both digital and analog displays. Behind the helm position is an elevated seating area located over to the port side of the wheelhouse. As always, I'm interested to hear what you think of this wheelhouse, including the layout and the equipment. Let me know in the comments. So that is the wheelhouse. Now, before I go into the engine room, let's just take you up onto the flybridge. Just to recap, you can access the flybridge both internally and via the ladder that is located in the cockpit. So I was just navigating through these hatches with one hand, so I thought I'd spare you the visual spectacle of that. But this hatch, can be secured on there via that latch. And obviously this door can also be secured using this hook as well. But yeah, I think you get the idea. So as I say, we've got a full flying bridge on this boat. We ascend this step over here on the starboard side, brings us up onto the helm station. Now, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give a clip, or I'm gonna share a clip that shows uh, Baz, who's one of the brokers here, uh, at the Volk bringing this boat back in alongside. Um, and I think you'll really enjoy that because not only does it show how well this boat handles, uh, but it gives you a sense of the feel and uh, the overall kind of maneuverability of the vessel. When you bear in mind that we came from that area over there and passed the yellow ship and we squeezed in that little gap. But at the time we were coming in, there was actually a uh, little ferry boat over there, but you'll see that in a minute. Um, I'll share that footage uh, at the end of the video so you can watch that. But yeah, so of course got the flybridge, more deck space over here, stowage compartment there so you can put in there whatever you want. And of course, let's have a look at the radar mast. Top of the range, Raytheon radar up there. Stainless steel exhaust, I mean, they sound phenomenal. When the boat is underway and those twin engines are fired up, uh, she really does sound spectacular. But yeah, I love that radar mast. I guess if you wanted to as well, you could put another radar up there. But yeah, so that's the flybridge, the upper deck, or the sun deck if you want to call it that. Open this up. I'm not sure I showed... Oh, there we go, look, more storage. Let's close that back up. I'll come back up in a minute and shut that properly. Of course, there is a ladder that leads down into the cockpit. But anyway, let me now take you back into the engine room. So I want to go in a bit more detail about the machinery on the boat, about the engines. Um, because on the first video that I did, the first Yacht Tour video, I don't think I went into quite as much detail uh, as what I'm going to go into now. So spin around, head back into the saloon. To send these steps once more into the galley and dining area and spin around 180 and into the engine room. Let's take a closer look at the engine room of Sea Ranger where two John Deere diesel engines are installed. Each engine produces 180 horsepower or 132.48 kilowatts and was installed in 2021. The maximum speed the vessel can reach is 11.5 knots with a cruising speed of 7.5 knots, providing a range of 1,500 nautical miles. The engines have 434 hours of operation. The engines are cooled by a closed kill cooling system from Court and the drive system operates via a shaft with an installed shaft seal. Engine controls are electrical, managed by a micro commander system and the hydraulic gearboxes are ZF2208 models, with one for each engine. For manoeuvrability, the vessel is equipped with both a hydraulic bow and stern thruster, 
both Slipner Side Power SE120 4V. The exhaust system is dry and the fixed propellers and propeller shafts are made from stainless steel, also from quartz. The electrical system runs on both 24 volt and 240 volt, powered by two Fisher Panda generators, each with 10.8 kW output. The first generator has 438 hours and the second has 221 hours. Additionally, a Parker Safari versatile series water maker produces 70 litres per hour and Sleepner side power fin stabilisers are fitted to ensure smooth operation in rough seas. In terms of tankage capacity, she has two 2,500 litre or 550 gallon steel tanks and one 600 litre freshwater tank as well as one 300 litre black water tank. But what do you think of the engine room? Share your thoughts in the comments below. So I hope you've enjoyed this more in-depth look around Sea Ranger. Like I say, when I first came aboard this boat, it was very much about featuring her for the first time because people were so excited to learn more about this boat. But now the vessel is quite well known, I thought I'd come back on board, show you around again, but this time give you a bit more details in terms of the machinery on board. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please don't forget to give the video a like and it'll do me a really, massive favor if you did subscribe to my channel i really want to try and get to 100k subscribers but anyway if you are interested in finding out more about this boat then she is currently listed for sale uh, i'll leave the listing to the broker's website on my website which you can find by following the link in the video description or the link pinned in the comments as well remember if you have got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my youtube channel then feel free to get in contact with me you know where to find me, that's right, by clicking on the link in the video description or the one pinned in the comments. I do also have a free newsletter that I've started on my Substack. If you want to sign up for that, as I say, it is free, although I do really appreciate the fact that some of you who have subscribed uh, have pledged a financial amount. Uh, it really does help support me in terms of the work that I'm doing, bringing these boats to you. Uh, so if you do want to subscribe, head to the link in the video description. And if you do want to pledge an amount, whether monthly or yearly, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. For my channel members, I've uploaded an exclusive video showcasing the exceptional boat handling skills of Baz from Devolk as he expertly maneuvers Sea Ranger back alongside in a very tight space. The video also includes a clip of the engines being fired up. If you'd like to support my channel by becoming a member, you can do so by following the link in the video description or visiting my channel's profile page and clicking join. Membership costs just a few pounds, dollars or euros each month and it greatly helps to sustain the channel. Your support is truly appreciated.